It has been said that life is a journey. A journey where one step follows the other and every step takes us into the future, to the unknown, to what is yet to be. No one fully understands the consequences of choices for the future. But sometimes, just sometimes, God pulls the curtain back and allows us to look across history and to see how He has masterfully orchestrated the events of humanity from antiquity to modernity. In these times of revelation, we see evidence of a God who centuries ago could hear the cries of a community of despised and rejected people. Those deemed the lowest in society, the Zebulun, the garbage collectors of Makwata Mountain. Every morning at the crack of dawn, over 7,000 rubbish collectors leave Garbage City on horse carts or small trucks and move into the city of Cairo, where they collect over 13,000 tons of rubbish from nearly 17 million residents and return to the narrow streets of Garbage City, bringing the refuse into their homes. Here the women and children sort it into piles of organic and inorganic garbage. Organic garbage is used to feed the livestock that roam the streets or live on levels just above the people's homes. There was a time when it seemed as though life would never change for these people. And no one cared. Because they were doing a filthy task, a job no one wanted. And then, nearly 30 years ago, one man did care. When I first came to Garbage City and stood at the first street, the homes were all made of tin. The people didn't have a chair to sit on. They sat on cardboard on the floor. There were no roads, no electricity or water. It was not fit for human life. The stench from the dead animals was horrible. But I was not really affected by all this. What affected me personally was the people who were in need of the grace of Christ. Everything else did not matter. The realization of the lostness of these people burned deep within Father Saman's heart. Right then, he determined to be God's instrument of change, and he would wade through pig pens such as this, and literally pull people from the muck and mire, and present them with God's love. When I went to invite the people to come and hear about God, they would hide in the pigsties. So I used to go in with sandals, but couldn't get my feet out of the mud. Then God told me to use boots. The second thing he told me was to take a torch because it was very dark. So I wore my trousers tucked into my boots and took my torch to find them. It was not easy for them to come. Then God told me to take their hand and kiss their hand then kiss their head, and if they did not want to come still, I would take shoes and put it on their feet, and that would really shake them, and then they would come with me. All this I learned from the Holy Spirit, who taught me how to work in this area. Today, Suad, Father Saman's wife, daily covers this city in prayer. But there was a time when she knew the high cost of obedience and personally needed to hear the voice of God. When God first called me to serve here, I really needed to hear the clear voice of the Lord. I was in a first-class company in Egypt and had a high salary. And so, for six months I prayed and did not make a decision until I personally heard the voice of the Lord. Slowly, lives began to change as Jesus' teachings became a reality in the lives of these people. We were lost in hell, 
We were drowning in sins, so we thank God now we know Him. We worship Him and Jesus lives in us. We guide people and visit them in their homes and we tell them how we were living in sin and how He changed us and we thank God. As this community sorts through tons of garbage, they often find items which have great worth. And each discovery is an opportunity to put God's word into action. There was a lady whose husband was traveling and working hard for three years. She kept the money and brought jewelry, bracelets and gold crosses, and she put all this into a bag. When we found it, we said, we must take it back to the owners. Where does this honesty come from, she asked. Our Jesus taught us to be honest. Years ago, I stole an expensive vase from a lady whose garbage I was collecting. Then I met God and He started dealing with me and I started praying. I went to confess to Father Simon. He said, now go, take it to her and tell her that you never knew Jesus when you did it, but now that you know Jesus, you are bringing it back. As the number of believers began to grow, it became evident that the Zebulun would need a place to worship. And in 1986, when a workman dropped a rock to the ground and it fell into a natural cave, they knew that God had answered their prayers.